Hey guys, uh, today's video is about surface area, uh, and we are on part one. This is going to be a three-part series. Part one is going to be surface area of prisms. So hopefully you remember what a prism is, okay? So I've got a couple of examples here. i got two different prisms. Remember, what makes a prism is the fact that the faces are in the shape of a rectangle. Okay, so here I have a rectangular prism because my bases are rectangles and the faces are all rectangles as well. Here I have a triangular prism because my bases are triangles and all of my faces are rectangles. So you may need to brush up on how to identify a prism, but today that's what we're talking about, the surface area of prisms. Okay. So what is surface area? Well, surface area is the sum of the area of all the faces of a three-dimensional figure. So, with that prism, surface area would be the sum of all of the different faces that you see. So, the top and bottom, the front and back, and the sides. There's a couple of different ways um, to look at surface area. Uh, sometimes you'll be asked for a lateral surface area. Well, what is that? How does it differ from total surface area? Well, with my figure, I've got two bases. Remember, your bases are always parallel to each other. Well, lateral surface area is going to be just the area of the lateral faces. That does not include my bases. Okay? So lateral surface area is just my faces. Total surface area would be all of those faces and the bases. Okay? And so when we look at the formula for surface area of a prism, We've got the perimeter of the base. So remember, the bases are um, parallel to each other, so the perimeter of that base. The height of the prism. So if these are my bases, the height of the prism would be the, dip, or the distance between the two bases. And then we're adding two times the area of the base. So two times the area of the base. Okay? So make sure that in your notes that you Identify what is surface area, what's the difference between lateral and total surface area. Make sure also that you get the formula for surface area of a prism and make sure that you label those different parts so you know what to substitute in for those variables when you're working with the formula. Let's get to example one. All right, guys, so let's take a look at our first example. Um, you have the rectangular prism drawn there for you, and what I've done is unfolded it so that you can see the net of that figure, okay? And so, remember, surface area, we want the area of all the faces that we have on this rectangle. What I've done is I've identified which I'm going to use as my bases. So I'm going to use the sides that are 9 by 5 as my bases. Remember, that's what I'm going to use. I'm using what I see as the top and the bottom. Okay? So with a rectangle, the formula for that area would be length times width. Okay? So for this one, all I have to do is 9 times 5 which is 45. Okay. And so obviously the top and the bottom are going to have the same area. So both of these would have an area of 45. Okay. When I go to this next face, I can see that the length of it is 9 and the width is the 4. So for the area of that rectangle, I'm going to do 9 times 4, which gives me an area of 36. And I know that that one, the front of this, is going to be the same as the back, so it'll be another area of 36. And then when I want to take care of the sides, well, this unfolded from right along this edge of the prism, so that's going to be 5 for my length times 4 for my width. So 5 times 4 gives me an area there of 20. And I can assume that the other one is 20 as well. So then, when I go and get my total surface area, I want to add the area of all the faces. So when I take my top and bottom, that's 45 where the area of each one of them times 2 means that's total of 90 for those two faces. For these, my 36, there were two of them. So 36 times 2 gives me an area of 72 for those two faces. And then my sides... I have 20 times 2, because there's two of them, gives me 40 for those faces. 
And so for my total surface area, I want to add up the area of all of my faces. And so I get a total surface area of 202 inches squared. Okay? All right, but using the nets is not the only way to find surface area. We can also use the formula for surface area of a prism. So um, the first thing we need to find is the perimeter of the base. Okay, and so I've drawn a green rectangle around what I'm using as my basis. Remember, perimeter is the distance around that face. So I'll add 9 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5 to get my perimeter. So that's 9, 9, 18, 10, 28. Okay, so the perimeter of that base is 28. And then I need the height of the prism. Okay, and so remember my bases are parallel to each other, and then the height connects the two of them, so that would be the four. Then I'll need to add two times the area of the base. So again, using that base, area remembers length times width, nine times five, which is 45. All right, so now I just need to simplify all the information that I've plugged into the formula. So 28 times 4 is 112, plus 2 times 45, which is 90. And then when I add those together, I get that my total surface area is 202 inches squared. Okay? So notice, it doesn't matter which way I work this problem out, I can use... That is so funky. Anyway, I can use the um, nets to find my surface area, or I can use the formula. Neither, it doesn't matter which way, guys. You choose which one works better for you. So you've got an example of both ways. Choose what works for you. Go ahead and try example two. All right, so here's the solution to the second example. Uh, we've unfolded that figure that you had, and so you see the net here. You've got these faces, as well as your bases, are all length of 4 times the width of 3. So 4 times 3 gives you an area of 12, but there's 4 of them that are that same size. So 12 times 4 gives me an area of 48 for those 4 faces. Then I need to take care of the sides here, which length times width would tell me 3 times 3 gives me an area of 9, but since there's 2 of them, I'm going to do that times 2 to get 18 inches squared, okay? So I've taken care of all six sides of that rectangular prism, add my 18 plus 48 to get a surface area of 66 inches squared. Now, if you chose to use the formula instead, the perimeter of the base, if I'm using this green side here, the one that was on the bottom in the picture, uh, the perimeter for three, four, three, the distance around would be 14, times the height of the prism, three, and we're adding two times the area of the base because the area of the base was four times three or 12. So simplify that, 42 plus 24 gives us the same surface area of 66 inches squared. Let's move on to example. So with example three, you have a triangular prism. Remember, your bases are always parallel to each other. So in this shape, there are no rectangles that are parallel to each other. Only the triangles are. So what I would like for you to do is just get in the habit of shading in what your base is. So here, the bases are the triangles. That's why we get triangular prism. All right, okay. so I've unfolded that triangular prism to give you the net. So we're going to find the area of all of the faces and then add them together. Okay. So um, I'm going to start with this one here, which is a rectangle that is 15 by 10, because remember, these two sides would have folded together. So 15 times 10 gives me an area there of 150, okay, because I just did length times width, okay. And if I can look and identify here that 15 is the same here, and it also has that width of 10, so this one also has an area of 150, okay. My rectangle here in the center, I've got 15 times 12, All right, and let's see, what is 15 times 12? Look at that, I didn't memorize this, guys. Two times five, two, three, five, one. 
Okay, that's 180. There you go, Miss Howard. <laughs> Alright, and then I've got, remember, my two triangular bases. So this one, I'm going to go outside of it to do my work. Remember, area of a triangle is one-half base times height. So that is one-half. Remember, base and the height have to be perpendicular to each other, so I cannot use that 10. So for my base, I'm going to use 12, and my height, I'm going to use 8. Okay, and so let's see, 12 times 8, I didn't memorize that either. 8 times 2, 16, carry the 1, 96. I should so know that. Okay, and then half of 96 would be 48. 48. Sorry, that's all rough looking. All right, and so. Um, that's only one of my triangles. Remember, there are two of them. So times two triangles means that both of those would be an area of 96. So now I need to add all of those areas together to get my total surface area. So I'm adding, let's see here, take that back, um, 150 times two, so 300 plus that face of 180 and my 96. So six there, 17, carry the one, three, four, five, 576 meters squared then would be my total surface area. Now let's look at how we can use the formula and get that same answer. All right, so now we're gonna plug in the information that we have into the formula for surface area of a prism. So first we've got perimeter of the base. Remember our bases are the triangles. So 12 plus 10 plus 10 gives us a perimeter of 32. Remember the height is the distance between your bases. So our height is the 15. Plus two times the area of the base. And remember when we worked out the base, it was an area of 48. So 32 times 15, I've done my math here, is 480. Plus 2 times 48 is 96. And add those two together to get a surface area of 576 meters squared. So again, use the nets or use the formula, and you still get the same surface area. Choose which works best for you, and go ahead and try the fourth example. So the solution to your last example, I've unfolded a net here of the prism that you had. So all four, three of these rectangles have a different area. So my first one here, I had 6 times 5, which is an area of 30. Here I have an area that's 6 times 4, which is an area of 24. And then this other rectangle down here is 6 times 3, which gives me an area of 18. And then I've got my two triangles here. Hopefully you recognize through the picture that you had a right triangle, so you could use 3 as your base and 4 as your height. So half of 12 would be 6, but there are two of those triangles, so those two triangles is 12. Okay? So when I add up all of my areas, I add them to get a total surface area of 84 meters squared. Now if you chose to use the formula instead, you would take the perimeter of the base, so your bases are your triangles. 4 plus 3 plus 5 gives us a perimeter of 12 times the height of the prism. Remember, height is the distance between those two bases, 6, plus 2 times the area of the base. And when we worked out the area of the triangles, it was 6. So just simplify from there. 72 plus 12 gives us that same surface area of 84 meters squared. All right, guys, so I hope that you have a good understanding of how to find the surface area of a prism. Make sure that your notes are complete, showing all your work, and that you have a good two-sentence summary. Uh, when you come to class tomorrow, we'll be working on surface area, so if you need to, make sure to rewind, pause along the way, slow it down, take this at your pace so that you have the best opportunity to perform well tomorrow. See you guys.